but getting back to this game that I never left. And as of right now, we definitely have a very special, legendary uh, guest uh, to bless you with uh, today. We're going to speak about a lot of things. We're going to bring some clarity and also show some charity to the game. I want all my YouTube family, I want you guys to welcome none other than Gangster Brown. What's going on, GB? Hey, my brother. How you doing? Oh, man, blessed. You know what I mean? Here, uh be able to do this uh with you you know what i mean how you feeling today oh great you know just lost a loved one a giant friend of mine but you know i'm gonna push and stay strong but you know i'm a little down right now you know and i'm um, just trying to stay strong and stay focused you know and uh understand life and uh you know stay strong that's what i can do right now you know i'm glad that i'm able to be on this beautiful show today you know i could talk about a little bit of it much as i can you know because it just happened so it's kind of still unbelievable it's kind of like one of those situations again another loved one gone but i'm gonna stay strong through it all right right um before i ask you questions uh pertaining to doobie uh i wanted uh before we even get started because i'm asking you from the beginning and i'm even asking you in the end i want you to give them information just in case if they decide to have a conversation with you later on i want you to give information pertaining to your book your website and everything that you got going on, how they can reach you, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. You got nothing but liberty to convey basically all that information right now. All right, yeah. <coughs> my website is uh, gangsterbrown.net. The correct spelling for my name is G A N G S T A Brown. My YouTube is Gangster Brown, same spelling, 510. My Twitter is just plain Gangster Brown, G A N G S T A. You know, and uh, they can reach me if you want to talk to me and you want to kick some real game so nobody can't hear us. My number is 510 840 8095. Dial that number. And we'll get together and, you know, we'll share some of this good and bad about this game. You know, we'll share what the real is and what the bad is and what happened. Those of us that last, those of us that didn't, and I kind of got a little understanding why some of us didn't. I kind of understood why some of us last for a short period of time, and I still understand and still rec recognize today why I chose a few of us that still here today, you know, still active, you know, with the lifestyle that we choose to live. It ain't easy, but uh, there's an understanding there's some good things I want to speak about about that when somebody have a situation, you know, I'm so sick of hearing the game ain't the same. I'm so sick of hearing the game is dead. I'm so sick of hearing that, you know, it ain't like it used to be, you know. I, I take that in three ways, you know. I understand what they're trying to say, but, you know, I know the man in this game situation is to be able to hold and manage a woman, you know, teamwork. So, you know, if you ain't got that good game, then, you know, you won't last long in this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you before we get into, you know what I mean, um, your reputation, you know what I mean, in the lifestyle and in these streets. I wanted to speak on uh, Doobie. You know, for those of you that don't know, uh, Doobie Doobie passed away. Doobie was a legendary, you know, uh, representative of the game. You know what I mean? And Doobie has passed away. You know what I mean? Uh, God has called him home. So for those of you that you know, new doobie. Later on, I'm going to open up the phone lines. I want you to call in. And maybe you got some questions that you want to ask Gangster Brown. Or maybe you want to make some statements uh, towards uh, Gangster Brown. Whatever. You know what I mean? I'm going to give you uh, the opportunity uh, to do so. But some of you knew uh, doobie through, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe you saw him on uh, Too Real for TV. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity later on. You know what I mean? To call in and ask questions or say whatever you wanted to say regarding, you know what I mean, Doobie. Um, but for right now, I'm going to ask Gangster Brown. Um, Gangster Brown, when was the first time you ever even met, you know what I mean, uh, Doobie? What year was it? Uh, I met Doobie 1979, 1980 on Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. He was one of the giants at the time that had it going on. And by me being from out of Oakland, California, coming into Los Angeles to a whole nother turf, a whole nother era, at that time, he was one of the top names that was available of somebody that 
that you had to kind of like watch out for, somebody that you had to be careful of because his game was strong and he was at his prime. He was uh, eating well, doing well at the time when I first saw him and first met him. Yeah, he was one of the brothers that was standing on the front line with all the all the respect, you know, soldier, gangster soldier, player, pimp, uh, international brother there, man. You know, he was a good brother to me, but a, but a bad situation to make a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's one thing that was irrefutable. I did hear that Doobie was definitely with the business, and he didn't take no yes, shit. Sir. You know yes, what I mean? Sir. Definitely. Yes, yeah. Um... During that time, you know what I mean, uh, I also want to add, uh, because I know there's going to be so many young peas that's going to be listening and they want to know, uh, what were some of the, I know Doobie, without a doubt, was one of the, the top names, but uh, just to hear it from you, what were some of the top uh, names when you came into the town in the Sunset Days? Yeah, it was a lot of, you know, at the time it was uh, World Wars Doobie, Michael Conception, uh, they had some brothers named Amdeek, uh, uh, they came out of, uh, a friend of mine out of San Francisco, Cisco, and it was a variety of brothers that was around at that time, but then as I learned, you know, they all came from different cities, but they migrated in Los Angeles, you know, that Sunset Boulevard at that time was a place to eat at, it was, you know, if you had your game tight, and you was down, and your game was tight, that's somewhere you can go to eat. But at the same time, if you was new or your game was weak, yeah, it was the wrong place to be because, you know, they was live and moving. I mean, they was really, really putting it down in a real way. I'm talking about, you know, it was fair game. You know, like I said, brother knew the end that they can get at your girl, quote, and put his beard down only for a certain period of time. If she did not move or you did not move her, you know, that everyday harassment, 24 hours a day harassment, what happened? You put your big in, the brother see what you're doing, he said, all right. And then he'll let you know, hey man, I seen you pecking at my girl, I see you working at my girl, you see she ain't moved, you see my game is tight, she with me, so now I need to get my money, and you need to leave her alone. Right. And then if the brother continue on trying to smash, as these youngsters do today, smash, you know, it was all bad. <laughs> <laughs> And and during those, uh, would you say, uh, during, uh, of course, the Hollywood days, would you say the guys were more uh, gentlemen? Would you say they were more Renaissance men? Or, you know, um, what, what would you say to that? Were they still, were they equal as far as with the violence that we have as of today? You know what I mean? Or what, well, go ahead. Well, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. Um, it's supposed to be a leisure game. That's what the verbal word says. That's what the understanding that you got in the beginning. But then, you know, as time went back then, and to understand that we all felt we was the best. We all felt our game was tight. And when somebody got in your business, or somebody moved your female, or even got your female out of pocket, that particular individual, depending on him or how he felt, of what he thought, how good his game was for another brother to be able to move his woman. I learned early. That's why people always ask me every day, well, why your name is Gangster Brown? Why you don't have a player name? Well, I was going to change my name in the beginning to a player name because I knew this was a player game. But then when I learned fast that it was a gangster game when you're dealing with a man and his woman with no understanding or she can't take it, or he's uh, bitter because she got with you, or you broke her. Some of us, quote, quote, it's hard to accept it. Okay, my brother, she got with you, I respect it. Some of, some of them said it and try to come back and kidnap. Some of them try to fight, some of them shot. Any kind of move you could do. Then you learn that, you know, hey, you know, you're dealing with a brother's feelings. You know, this man been with this woman, and she been serving him, and she been taking care of him. She been doing her part as a lady of leisure with this man, and now she want to move on for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of us couldn't take it. You know, a lot of us was like, man, forget that, man. Uh-uh. We going to take her and smash that. That's money and food off our table, you know. So they talk that good quality 
we used to talk, but it ain't really nothing like that. This game dangerous as hell. You know, right. this game is so dangerous, it ain't funny. Right, right. They really ain't they really ain't knowing. And see, what I like about you is in all of our conversations, you always kept it gutter with me. You know? And uh it was always, you know, just real. Whether it was gutter, I mean, you know, it, it wasn't on one accord with that shit that they was talking about because a lot of times what older peas will try to do, GB, they'll try to act like a lot of the shit that's going on right now is something new. As if the young people created violence. As, nah, if, nah. as if we created confrontations. As if basically, you know what I mean, when you see two peas or peas getting on discord with one another, like this is something new. Now, I will agree that you had more verbal going on where people could basically come on one accord in a conversation. They could socialize and come to a conclusion. I say that, but don't try to act like the young instead of there and created violence, they created gang banging, they created gangster shit, and that's not true. It just evolved, but this shit been going on. It been going on. Um what I want right. what I want to ask you, what year did you start in the game? I started I got in the game uh young at a uh, seventy three, seventy four. And that's when I was getting my boots laced, you know, and then I had to see there's something else that they don't understand, they don't speak about. See, I had the fortune of the blessing to be able to go through a few females in the beginning of my career that didn't stick. And then I had the blessing of having one that had my back, you know. She really was down for the game. And not knowing that when you have a woman that got your back, right. how much easier and luxury and the quality of the game can be. And then when she saw that I was game tight, so you have to remember now, understand what I'm saying? That year she gave me, had me where my game was tight of what it is, what is, what it, what do, what happens when you have a good backbone? Or what you can do when you have a good backbone, you know, and then you miss out on a lot of the knockings, you miss out on a lot of the out of pocket. So it raised you to be a kind of brother where you kind of feel like, well, hey, man, you know, you need to get your game together. Hey, man, you need to understand this game because, you know, your women are choosing, you get knocked, and you need to figure out what's your problem. You need to get a better car, or a tailor made suit, or you need to perm your hair, or you need to put whatever the situation might be. So for me, and I just learned this recently, because that same lady I had back then called me, and I was able to ask her, when you left, why did you leave? Why did you run off and go to Texas after we was doing good and we was booming? And it, and it blew my mind and she, when she said, I seen you had it going on. I seen you was, game was tight. And I showed you, uh, shared with you what a good woman should be, what a good woman should do. And then when I seen that you was on your way to the top, quote, I decided to go on with my life. And you came to Texas and you didn't understand that I still wanted to be with you, but I didn't want to be with you in that lifestyle no more. And I was ready to move on. And so the fuck that we went through in Texas and you were in the jail and all that good stuff behind that understanding that I wanted to go and I was ready to go. And I served you well. And you were supposed to let me be. But you continue on want to bring me back and I didn't want to come back. See? And then when I got over that part of it and I came back to Oakland, California, then through her being with me for all them great years helped me understand what it's like to have a good woman on your team. How far you could go, how long you could last. See? And so from there, I had the patience to understand if I'm going to raise a woman in this game, she has to kind of understand this is the way it is. This is how it go. This is how you win. This is how you be able to get to the top. Both of us in this game, you see. And so that's why I'm a little, uh, 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 I'm a little cocky because see, a lot of brothers had to go through a lot of girls first before they got that one. 
where they was able to come up. Well, for me, it kind of happened young. See, I was young, but I was standing with the big boys because regardless what kind of tools they had or how long their hair was or fingernails or whatever it was, this one girl that I had, she didn't care about that. She would tell me, well, baby, this boy just got some new rims on his Cadillac. She was the kind of saying, if you want some, we'll get some. See, she wasn't the kind that would choose you because your rims was bigger than mine and then realize that you ain't no good or you wasn't right and then come back to me. See, she was the kind of woman that showed me whatever anybody in this game can do, we out here at the same time, doing it the same way, it's all about the money. So don't ever feel like, baby, you know, whatever you want, we gonna get it. So then I didn't understand that then. I just thought that, you know, my game and me, quote, was superb. You know, I felt like, hey, this is this is good. But see, I didn't get a chance to really see the bad side till later on after she retired. And then I had to move on to try to find a replacement, see? And the only reason why I last, I was able to continue to make a number one female, one after another. Uh, my number two female was just as good as the number one. So when the number one, whatever the reason why she left or retired or didn't want to do this no more, number two picked up the slack and I never missed a beat. I was able to be fortunate to do that for over 30 years. And this is why, see, people don't understand. They say, well, what makes him so different? I'm supposed to be so all this and everybody else. Well, it's hard to last in this game with a smile. I hope you guys live as long as you want and never want as long as you live, man. Y'all be blessed now.